My name is Julia Davis and I am a fifth grade homeroom teacher. For experience in this unit, we just showed them a bunch of advocates. We told them these people are advocates without them knowing what that vocabulary word meant. And then we said, what do you think it means? What do these people have in common? And then from that, we pull out a definition of what it means to be an advocate. Uh, advocacy means that we could change some causes, but now I know that we can use collective action to make it more successful. Um, during advocacy, we sort of learned more like about big important people that advocated, why they advocated, and more how they advocated. Uh, my teacher helps me uh, understand what the project means and how we can really uh, collaborate with other people to make this project uh, with other people. She didn't have an agenda on what we were, were going to choose. She let us decide um, and like if we wanted to go to the moon, she would let us do that. Um, we then use these people and this definition and our background knowledge to think about what questions do we have? Do you see advocacy in your own life? Um, we know that the best learning comes when, when students are interested. And so giving them the time and space to say, what do you want to know? And so we record all of their questions and then we use those questions as a starting point. We started of voting, like putting in post-it notes on what we want to do. We had like four categories. One is security, love, justice, family, and then one other. We decided that our most important thing is family, love, health, and security. And we, in there, we chose the recess is more important thing to us, and we started to advocate in that project. Miss Julia definitely helped us a lot. She like answered a lot of our questions, but we also sometimes she would say, how can you figure that out? And then we would have to go get a book about that because we had tons of books in our classroom about that or we would go on our device or, or something like that. Um, and if we were still stuck, then Miss Julia would help us, but usually she would try to get us to look through books or um, technology first. Um, when I researched, uh, this thing came up as like, uh, recess is a learning time, and I didn't really know that. Learning time as in we learn social skills, problem solving skills, we can solve problems without a teacher, and then that really interested me. We researched and investigated into our values. What do we care about? And then, then we started to think about, if this is what we care about, how can we move this forward? Sometimes that's through independent research. Sometimes it's through a very controlled uh, setup that we do together. Sometimes it's by happen chance. Sometimes it's by talking to people, um, by interviewing other people. But we try to honor those questions and we think about the bigger goal of the unit and try to build a pathway where those two things walk together. I found out that the project wasn't really just to uh, uh, just to tell that you want more recess. It was actually to make it happen. We learned like that um, doctors recommend 60 minutes of recess every day um, for for your re for your or not recess but outdoor time um, to keep a kid healthy and not obese or overweight. Also, recess is a learning time. So technically, if you have 
60 minutes of recess, then that's also 60 minutes of time that, you're, that you can learn, that your students can learn. When you've spent six weeks on learning what it means to be an advocate and then diving deep into what do you care about, the apply portion comes into go be an advocate. Some kids made a stop motion video that we showed at a learning celebration um, to the rest of the school. Some kids say, said, do other kids feel like we feel? And we ended up doing a survey of the whole elementary school and collected data about how many kids want more recess time. We collected data on how many kids spend their morning recess time eating snack and not playing because being healthy was one of our underlying values. And so because there are mul because kids chose in multiple ways how to advocate, the product was different for each kid. But the goal was to get your message out. What I did for my big project was I worked with Junhee and uh, Jamil. We, well, us three, we worked on making a st stop motion Lego video um, to sort of exaggerate what happens to people if they don't have recess. It's an exaggerated version of it. So first we started by um, making a storyboard because uh, we worked with Miss Julia to sort of get what we were gonna try to say with our video. Personally, I like stop motion and there are some other kids in my class who enjoy it too. Um, so we started trying to work with that. Um, and yeah, we just sort of started filming it and then it didn't really make as much sense. So then we went over it with our teacher and like edited some stuff, took out some scenes, um, added some like background noise and um, sound effects and different like just writing on the screen, which made it way more like you would get the message and you would understand the message more. My group was making a letter, and we wrote a letter to Miss Karen and Mr. Dave. We wrote the way it's argument essay, that like we wrote introduction, and with one reason, another reason, and conclusion. And we, I thought that that was a good way to tell, tell to Miss Karen because we had many reasons and evidence to support the idea. We made posters to represent our thinkings and we thought the visual model would be the best thing. So we made posters and stop motions. How our advocacy impacted our audience was really part of our key learning. And I think kids are realizing they maybe didn't get the impact that they wanted. And so in our reflecting, we really reflected on, did we really get our message out in the best way? Like, could we have done more to get our message out? Could we have done bigger things? There is a few challenges. What few challenges were like we didn't know what to write. We were like all stuck. What should we write? Like how should we format it? And then one of our peers came and uh, we asked what uh, sh should we do. One person said argument essay, and then Miss um, Julia said argument essay. So we formed it in an argument essay. Uh, it was collective action that we did with whole class, but now I think we can separate to individually because we now know how to do it, so we can practice our own. So if we did this again, I would. My teacher had us spend a lot of time dra um, drafting and like um, planning a um, advocacy writing piece about uh, about advocating for 
an essay about advocating for more recess, but we never actually published that, so I would just not have focused on that because we are this, that was our second essay, so on a, so it would have been a better use of time to not have to draft it all because we never published it and just get to working on the storyboard and working on the stop motion video because I feel like we could add more detail and make it more interesting. The our technique was pretty good, so we tried to convince people more and more, but I think we need like more techniques. Like we might want to convince them and help them understand if they had questions. I, I think our inquiry was really successful. I think that we got our message out. I think that kids got to use all sorts of artistic talents and organizational skills and personal inquiries to achieve a goal. We, at the end of the day, we did advocate for something. And I think our advocacy not being completed is real. And that's really what we want for kids. Is a, like, You can't put an eight week box on something in the real world. And so for them to have this experience of if we really care about this, we have until May 30th. Like, Can we convince for next year? Can we keep moving this forward even though the unit is over? I think when we do this unit again next year, one of the things we're thinking about is that connection to reading and writing. Uh, when we first introduce argument articles and persuasive articles and articles that really have a, a hardcore stance on one side or the other, um, we use kind of arbitrary sets. So students were looking at, are sharks more dangerous or are humans more dangerous? And in the kids' reflections, they were like, why did we read those? And as an adult, you're like, well, we were practicing. You were practicing learning pros and cons. You were practicing using articles that don't support you, but to use them as counterclaims and to address the issues of the other side. And so I think in thinking about next year, we would think about how to make that more real. Like how can we structure the inquiry so that we get to their values, their beliefs, their projects earlier so that they can do more of that reading and writing practice in a way that's real for their project and not arbitrary. The one piece of advice that I have for teachers who are thinking about doing a big inquiry project like this is to trust your students. They are naturally curious, they are naturally interested, and they want to do compelling things. And so by giving them the time and the space and the support, you'll get amazing things from them.